and welcome to FICA Friday. My name is Lacey Sheldon, and I am here at McIntosh Memorial Library in Viroqua, Wisconsin. For FICA Fridays, this is an informal community meetup group to discuss all things Scandinavian, wintry, Huga, and to really just enjoy taking an afternoon break together. The word fika is a Swedish custom, a kind of a social coffee break where people gather to have a cup of coffee or tea and a few nibbles. And I made this. This is the word fika, and this is how you pronounce it. Fika. So this is fika Friday. Some other words that are really similar to fika is the word huga. Here it is, huga. This is how you spell it, and this is how you say it, huga. So huga is a quality of coziness and comfortable conviviality that really engenders a feeling of contentment or well-being, which I think during the winter time is a really nice feeling to hold on to, especially when it's very cold out here. And the last word is cozily. This is how you spell it, cozily, and this is how you say it, cozily. Cozily is more or less the Norwegian term for fuga. So in the program, it's like I mentioned, informal, a way to kick back and relax and to enjoy one another's company to beat the winter blues. <laughs> so I started to work on my Bika uh, coffee table, essentially. So I can show you here what I brought today. <laughs> so there are some items here I'm sure you'll notice. I have Lefsa. I have some cherry jam that was made by local farmers who are Amish. And I also have for myself some healthy raw assortment of nuts. And I also have for my sweets, some caramel corn that my mother made over the holiday, which feels really huga in the way that I, I love my mom. And she took the time to prepare that with her children in mind. And so I wanted to include that on my board because it makes me feel cozily. The same goes for the lefsa that my sister made. It's been a tradition in my family that when uh, a niece or nephew, son or daughter uh, is married, that the couple is given a left some making kit. And so that includes the big round uh, skillet that the left is prepared on and the long mm -hmm. left flipping stick. So my sister used that to make the left for us using our family's recipe. So I'm curious this afternoon if who's familiar with left Do you have any family recipes or any traditions in your own family that you enjoy? You, if you made a fika board, what would you put on it? Well, I can uh, speak to that if we got a chance for me to talk. Absolutely. Well, um, I come mainly from kind of the Swedish side, which I know we got to kind of keep quiet around here, but <laughs> I do have a lot of uh, Norwegian relatives too. But in my family, you know, I think we, we tried to carry on the Scandinavian history as best we could. My great grandmother had come from Sweden and my whole family had gone back to visit and was familiar with a lot of the Swedish customs. But, you know, since we were on the Swedish side, we did not make lefse. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But when I was 
I don't know, around 20, I had a good friend that was a, a left a maker and he taught me how to do it. And so I did learn and I enjoy making lefsa from time to time. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really interesting. Um, from what I understand, the word huga is more of a, um, a Swedish, or excuse me, a Danish term and fika is more of a Swedish term. And then kozali, of course, more Norwegian. I know well, that. Yeah. There's a lot of history there, you know, like uh, my dad, who was Norwegian, used to tell stories about the Swedes, and the Swedes, you know, had stories about the Norwegians. And mm -hmm. he basically said that since the Swedes and the Norwegians couldn't get along, they had the Danish governed. That's uh, that's just excellent. It's nice to hear about your stories with your father. That's nice. Does anyone know which five countries uh, make the Scandinavian countries? Or which five countries are considered Scandinavian countries? I think I'm guessing it would be Denmark and Norway and Sweden and Finland and Iceland. That's it. It's my understanding those are the five Scandinavian countries. Yeah. I know that lefse making can take quite some time to do. And I think that makes it that hooganess, that quality of coziness. And um, what I've learned about huga too is that huga really um, is about taking the time to do something about being involved in and present with what you're doing as well. So left, making lefsa because it takes hours and oftentimes it can be done with other people. I think it has that quality of huga. With my family every winter, the ladies get together for what we call uh, lefsa ladies night. And we all have aprons that my tanta or my aunt made for all of us that has our names on it. And we just, you know, start mashing those potatoes and getting all the skillets going. And we have a really nice time, a very huga time together making our lefsa. And we take turns moving around to different stations and, and also take some time out to bake cookies and uh, decorate them with the children in our family as well. <laughs> I can't resist my mom's caramel corn. <laughs> well, I wanna say hi, Kathy, and welcome. Hello. Hi, welcome. We're just warming up this uh, hour long informal conversation. I'd shown my Fika board that I had made today. And I also later on can show you all some books that the library has about the subjects of Huga and Fika and Kozali as well. So Kozali might not be as well known, but, but as I had mentioned before, Kozali is essentially the Norwegian term for huga. A little bit more about huga is that it is a verb. So when we use it, we would say, for example, we are going to huga now, or we huger now. They put an R at the end of it if instead of an ing. So we are huger now. Um, huga lee or huga leet. Uh, the same thing, um, but that's when they use it as an adjective to describe. So huga is a verb. It can also be used as an adjective as well. So when we were talking about the lefsa then, we would say that the lefsa is huga lee. And we huga, huga now. <laughs> I know it's a lot of huga huga, right? <laughs> 
if something is unhuga, um, they would say uhuga. They put the letter U in front of it. So if we're understanding that huga is is like the contentment and coziness and it it fosters being very present and also taking your time with it. Can we think of any examples that would be uhuga or unhuga? I guess something that comes to my mind would be horror movies. I think that would be pretty uhuga. <laughs> On the other note, if something is really, really huga or super huga, you would say ra huga. So that's R A in front of the word huga, ra huga. <laughs> so awesomely huga or extra huga. I like this word huga. And I also like the word fika too as we'd mentioned before, is the Swedish custom of taking a coffee break and having conversation with friends, taking a moment to keep it easy and light and friendly. And Joe, um, Joseph had mentioned that there is, um, in Northern Minnesota, there is a coffee, uh, coffee cafe called Fika. And he and I had been chatting with each other and uh, we have both been there. It's in a small town named Lutzen. And yeah, just the North Shore is really, really beautiful. And I really like going up there because the nature is so wonderful. But I feel like the people there also embrace some of their Scandinavian heritage as well, which is also a part of what Fika Fridays is as well. Getting to chat with one another about our familiarity with Scandinavian heritage, culture, as well. So there's that. Anyone have any thoughts or anything they'd like to share? Lacey, can I show you two things that I have in my um, kitchen? Well, Two things that I have devoted to Scandinavian, although my heritage is not Scandinavian. I have been to Sweden and I did take Swedish in college. Oh, wow. um, so I could I could actually put this on video to show you, but I don't know how to reverse the screen. So I might have to turn my laptop. There so you, you know, I taught, I taught kindergarten at the Waldorf school. So we always um, had little circle times and songs about gnomes. Oh. I believe they're called Nusa. In, in Scandinavian countries. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got this giant gnome from my son and his wife for um, Christmas. So I made a seasons table like we did in the kindergarten with that. So it's made out of ice and then things from my garden and evergreens and weeds and berries. Wow, that's so then you, beautiful. Then you put a candle in it. I was Zooming with some friends and they told me about these Swedish lanterns that you make from snowballs. So you make an igloo, sort of like a dome shape with snowballs and make sure you space them apart, building on top. And you put a candle or several candles in it and then the light shines out in your yard from this little igloo. And that, I think that's called a Swedish lantern. Oh, wow. So while I was looking that up online, I also found these ice lanterns and I just made it out of a yogurt container and a little jelly jar uh -huh. and filled it with water around the edges and then put in all of these evergreens and weeds and berries. So they're so lovely. That's so beautiful. What a creative idea. How did you, um, so probably the yogurt container was the larger container and then yeah. the jam jar went inside of that. Is that right? Yes, I'd actually show you. And the, okay. right. There's the yogurt container. There's the little jam jar. So I put it in like that. And I actually had to tape on four sides to tape it to the edges. And I had to put some pie, little pie weights inside so that it wouldn't bob up to the top and it anchored it. Then I put water around the edges and then pushed 
all those weeds and evergreens down in and then popped it into my freezer for a day. You could even put it outside if it was cold enough. And then of course put warm water in the next day and, and then took it all apart. So wow. it was fun. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Almost like a, well, it definitely is an ice sculpture in, in its own regard, right? Right, yeah. It was, I just needed something creative during this time of isolation. Yeah, definitely. And well, you know, Roberta, by sharing that, that gives me the inspiration to be creative at home myself too. So thanks for sharing that. Sure. I've seen something like this before when I was in Minneapolis. Um, I was walking through a neighborhood, beautiful neighborhood, um, and they had out ice sculptures too that were rounded but they were able to put the candles inside of it. So this must be definitely a similar idea. I think that you can do it with balloons. If you fill balloons up with water, that's what a friend of mine told me, but then you would have to somehow dig out or drill out a hole in it so you could put the candle. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. That's probably how they did it then, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. No, has anyone ever seen any really extravagant ice sculptures before? I just have in mind something that I've seen, but only on uh, the television. And just where they take these blocks of ice and then start cutting into them to make extravagant um, ice sculptures. And I suppose they do the same, some people somewhere do the same with snow as well and make snow sculptures out of it. Maybe that's a little off subject of the Scandinavian topics, but I think including all kinds of creative projects that we're involved with is, is interesting. A part of the continuing Seek of Fridays will be a, focused a bit more on different subjects too, and always just free form discussion about anything. Um, but I was thinking it would be nice to have a craft project where the library could provide materials that people could stop by and pick up along with their hot cocoa and take home and put together the, the projects while we're having our chats on Friday too. So that could be an interesting idea, have a, a Pika Friday focused on a craft. Yeah, Kathy likes it, awesome. That's great. Um, some other things I was thinking of for FICA Fridays as well is having some guest speakers come in. So I thought it could be nice to invite some um, local businesses that really focus on Scandinavian culture and heritage as well. I can think of a shop. I can think of a few restaurants and bakery uh, that might be wanting to join us at some point. So that's something we can look forward to on FICA Friday. Um, I also know that there's a local heritage group that meets pretty often. Um, so I'd like to invite some speakers to come from the North Skidalen area. Uh, and we also have um, a friend, a good friend of Macintosh Memorial Library who lives in Norway. And she is also a, a genealogist. She visits Westby and Viroqua almost yearly up until of course this year. But we here at the library continue to meet with her fairly often through Zoom. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she'd be willing to come and be a guest presenter for FICA Friday as well. So we can look forward to some genealogy conversations, some cooking, some baking, some craft conversations. Uh, we wanna think about what books the library has as far as Huga and Pika and Kozali. Um, I pulled a few of them, but I also want to let everyone know that there are hundreds of titles about Huga and Kozali um, and Pika. So this is one that was on our shelf. It's called The Little Book of Huga, The Danish Secrets of Happy Living. Um, 
this is written by uh, a Danish man. Um, but I really liked this book because it does include a lot of different recipes as I find many of the titles do. Um, and it also explains a lot about, yeah, that, that happiness um, that I feel like what I've been understanding is that Scandinavians during the winter months really enjoy diving into Huga and that is how they beat the winter blues. So this is one title. Um, this author also wrote another book, which I, is called The Art of Making Memories. A very nice, sweet book, also concise and just um, really has a lot of descriptions in here about, and ideas about how to create happy memories, which I think is really sweet. Create meaningful moments. So two nice titles. Um, here we go. Here are two. In Cod We Trust and The Last Word of Ludafisk. Did anyone have Ludafisk on their tables over the holiday season? Oh yeah. Yeah. I love those. Yeah. That's great, Joseph. I do too. <laughs> Um, I have a little story to share about that is um, not this past holiday season, but the season before I prepared Ludafisk myself for the first time. And I made that um, for my Norwegian American side of the family. And everyone was really anticipating the Ludafisk because they hadn't tried it in a very long time, not since grandma, grandma had made it. So I make the lutefisk, which I didn't find to be too complicated or strange. I, it was frozen and then I popped it out of its bag, dunked it in the boiling water, waited five, 10 minutes, pulled it out, strained it, then put it on lepsa, of course, um, added butter, of course, and added some mashed potatoes, rolled them up and handed them out. Even my cousin's five-year-old tasted it. So that was a very proud moment. <laughs> but everyone was like, it's not quite as weird or different than they had built it up to be. So I'm wondering if anyone else has had um, any recent Ludafisk experiences that they want to share. I've had a lot of... Uh... Very funny little fist stories. Um, well, just briefly, my grandmother used to soak it in the wash tubs in the basement. Really? You know, because back in the day it was dried and they needed to rehydrate it, okay. I think is what it was. Anyway, I came home from uh, college and did my wash and they drained into the the bucket where the lutefisk was and I ran upstairs and I apologized to my grandma I said my god grandma um I don't know what happened and she goes well did the lutefisk turn blue that was all she was concerned about as if my jeans had you know faded into the lutefisk and since the lutefisk didn't turn blue we were still able to eat it <laughs> And then, you know, my grandmother was great at making lutefisk and my mother was, but they're both gone now. So it's, I'm left to my own designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother actually couldn't cook lutefisk for the last few years of her life. So I would make it for her. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get a little unconventional and not really knowing how to make lutefisk one year I thought it would be good to use shore lunch as a crust and then fry it. Hmm. And it actually turned out great. Fried lutefisk worked. Wow, okay. So, so what, did, what did you use for a crust? It's called, it's called shore lunch. You know, you use it for like walleye or northerns. Okay, it's a you breading. Know, it's, a, 
it's a typical breading, but I mean, okay. nobody's ever breaded lutefisk as far as I know. Right. I think you're on to something new here, Joseph. <laughs> oh, that was good. And then I did try um, a couple different methods of cooking. And once I didn't really research the recipe that well. So I, um, I baked it, but in the pan that I baked it in, I added a little water mm -hmm. and really lutefisk, the idea is to get the water out of it rather than into it. So anyway, when I pulled the pan out of the oven, after sort of steaming the lutefisk, there was absolutely zero fish left in the bowl. <laughs> it had just wow. disappeared. Oh, <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm really glad that that, <laughs> well, I shouldn't say I'm glad, but. <laughs> this I'm year I made it and I followed the recipe and it actually worked out and I fed it to my family and Mm -hmm. I have three daughters. None of them were very excited about it. I hate to mm -hmm. say possibly not even one bite disappeared, but I do remember <laughs> my 16-year-old daughter running to the sink area and uh, deciding she didn't like it. <laughs> so it takes a little getting used to. Yeah, I'd say so. Also, um, the cheese, um, oost, br Brun oost. Have you had the cheese that comes in a block? Yes. Um, I think that's delicious. I just love it. But All those cool. cheeses are an acquired taste too. Mm -hmm. Maybe next week I'll, or not next week, excuse me, but the next coming fika in two weeks, I'll have uh, some, some oost on my fika board too. That'll be perfect because we won't be able to smell it from here. <laughs> I'll save you. Uh, maybe Ludafisk one of these days too. Maybe. Oh, I hope so. Maybe. <laughs> but I really enjoy all of the um, different Scandinavian treats. I know there's a lot of different cookies and bakery items as well. Um, in Westby, there's a bakery that focuses um, and produces uh, these kind of bakery items. I haven't had a chance to try their uh, delicacies yet, but I would like to do that. Does anyone make any specialty baked items around the holiday time or any time of the year? I can think of crumb kaka, is that one? Sure. And, and rosette as well. Yes. They seem a little bit more technical, but I know that there, um, and also in quite a few of these Huga books, there are recipes for, you know, also pies as well. So this is um, Norshka Nook's book of pies. Um, Norshka Nook is actually a bakery and restaurant that is in some northern Wisconsin, um, I think Osseo, but we have this, their book too. So there we go. Candy pies. Yum. Yes. Pecan, raspberry. Oh, it makes me hungry just looking at it. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then as, far, as long as we're talking about food, I wanted to show another cookbook we have, but it's quite big. Oh, okay. So check this out. It is stacked with recipes ranging from fermenting, um, of course, like the typical, you know, soups, salads, main entrees, vegetarian entrees, meat entrees, etc., cetera, et cetera. But I really like how also it gets into sausage and charcuterie making. It's really, um, really in depth. It's just stacked with recipes. And from what I understand is when this book was published, um, it really made a wave in the culinary world or for culinary literacy. 
because not many books about Nordic cooking had been as popularized. And the man who wrote it is um, certainly a famous chef. So this is really great. He also um, wrote a book that we have a copy of, but it's um, specific for Nordic baking. So if there are any questions about, say, how to poach, her or poach herring or ferment it or pickle it, I guess, pickled herring, um, all of those are listed in here. And then it talks a lot too about um, ingredients that are very specialized to the Scandinavian countries. And I thought, I find that really interesting too, because they have such um, different and new ingredients to me that can be discovered. But then there are also so many recipes that would also be very familiar to us, like meatloaf. <laughs> So, oh, here's a picture of the, um, I believe this is the Krumkaka tin, if that's right. And how to roll them up. Oh, the big book on the Nordic cookbook, available here at the library for you. I suppose I could mention too, while we're talking about the books, is that the library right now, we're having um, an adult winter reads program. It's pretty straightforward. This is a bookmark and it lists, you list your name and some information here. And then you would write down the three book titles that you read before February 27th is the last day. You bring this bookmark back to the library lobby and or you can mail it to us and or put it in the books that you return into the Dropbox. P.S. The Dropbox is open 24 seven and located on Jefferson Street. But getting back to this, you fill in the book titles, you submit it, and then you are awarded a prize for your winter reading. And the prizes are quite good. There are candles and chocolate and cookbook, um, Sudoku book, and gloves and candies. There's a lot of great prizes to be won. And then also your bookmark is put into a drawing uh, for a grand prize. And the grand prize is an Amazon Kindle. And that would be announced on February 27th. That's fun, right? I think adults can have a, a winter reads program and win prizes. <laughs> It would help motivate me to read, that's for sure. I got five books on my shelf ready to go and I'm slowly chipping away on them, but if there was a deadline, maybe I'd actually get through. There we go, literacy goals. <laughs> Hi, Kathy, I see that you have your hand raised. Yes, I was wondering if you only enter once or do you enter multiple times? You are welcome to, that's a great question. Kathy asked um, if a person can enter more than once and the answer to that is yes. If okay. you are, you read six books, then you would enter in two bookmarks, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for asking, Kathy. Thank you. Yeah, and how are you doing today? Me? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm just not, um, I didn't realize it was Zoom, so I wasn't Zoom ready <laughs> to be seen, yeah. but um, I'm really enjoying this. Too bad it isn't every Friday. <laughs> yeah. I am really um, happy to hear your feedback. Always open to feedback. That's great. Uh, I keep saying that I learned three words in 2020. Um, I learned the word Corona, I learned the word COVID, and I learned the word Zoom. So, <laughs> yeah. yep. so there's that. And <laughs> but um, it's um, still at these um, uncertain and withdrawn times. It's, it's really great to be able to connect and meet people. Um, so I'm really thankful to each of you for joining today and everyone 
um, else who will be watching from home eventually. Thanks for taking the time to connect in. Um, I'm oh, certainly really? open to hearing more feedback as well from anyone if you'd like to call me here at the library and or send an email. You could even write me a letter if you'd like um, about any subjects that you would like to cover on FICA Fridays. Um, or if you have an idea for a guest presenter, um, be happy to hear from you guys anytime. Um, I'd also like to start us a private Facebook group. And that could be another place where we can recommend books to one another or share recipes, um, share pictures as well, if you'd like. So you can look for that um, or send me an email and I can send you the information for that. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. Sure. Nice. Um, let's see, I had a couple more books. I think each week I'll pull out a few, a few books. Um, so I am able to browse around in the stacks and if I wasn't here, I know how much I would miss it. So I thought it would be really nice to share some things um, that may be of interest to you. So this is another title I pulled off the shelf. It's um, Scandinavian Cra Christmas Crafts and Recipes, which knowing that we're already into a new year, but this book is really lovely. I think the craft projects definitely extend into you know, different times of the year as well. Um, but yeah, I really thought this book was very beautiful. And it's not overcomplicated either. So there's that. Um, also, along the lines of crafting at home and tuning in from home, I chose this book, Cozy Minimalist Home, More Style, Less Stuff. Um, I know that as I've been spending more time at home, I've been doing a little editing, if you will. Um, and I just think and see quite often that Books about home decor um, have been very popular so far um, this winter. Um, so I thought that would be a nice one to share. This sort of goes through a little bit more of that interior, interior design. Um, as far as I understand, Scandinavians have um, almost in their own way a very specific style of home interior, which I thought could be a really interesting subject to uh, maybe focus on, um, on another week of Friday. Um, I think there's a lot more to that beyond Ikea. So <laughs> uh, some very famous um, architects as well as um, designers of home goods. Has anyone heard of any, of anything about that subject before? I remember going to Little Norway when that down by Spring Green. Um, that was years ago when I was raising babies, but um, mm. their furniture, their houses, um, all of that type was really interesting to go through and to see those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when we think of think of culture, the, the design of cities and towns, and even the details that are inside of um, homes of different community members, there's, there's really something to that. And I'd like to explore that a bit more. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. In, I'm new to this area, Viroqua. I've only been here about a year. Welcome. And Thank you. I'm really enjoying it. I love this area. Um, but as I drove through Westby to get to La Crosse, I noticed there's a lot of Scandinavian or some kind of something going on in that town. Do they have um, uh, specialty shops or anything like that or things that you can go see that is along that line? Yes, I could definitely recommend some, a place for you. That would be Dragney's uh, Scandinavian Gift Shop. 
Um, I'd recommend that you would give them a call first. I'm not quite sure what their hours are right now, but the owners of Dragnees have had a very long history. Um, they opened their shop in Westby decades and decades ago. Um, Mrs. Dragney came to the library once to give a presentation on their gift shop. And it's, it's really fascinating. Their shop carries many different items that are sourced from uh, Norway and Sweden. Um, and it range, their collection ranges from clothing to home goods to um, gift cards. They have really beautiful things in there. And they also work with local area rose mullen artists. Um, and those rose mullen artists produce beautiful works of art um, that are sold at Dragney's, almost like um, an art gallery, if you will. It's just beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome and welcome, Kathy, to the Thanks. community. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that makes me think of rose mauling a bit more too. I think it would be fantastic to invite um, the rose mauling group uh, to maybe join us on a Fika Friday. The rose mauling art is really beautiful. I've always been fascinated how they can put multiple colors of paint on their paintbrushes at one time and then they turn it and make some really um, beautiful designs. And as far as I understand, the designs are also specialized to um, different regions of Norway and Sweden. Oh, I think that could be really fascinating. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows a Rose Mahler. <laughs> And um, I also wanted to show too that we have different travel books. So I pulled out the Norway travel books, but we have them on the other Scandinavian countries as well. But I thought this is a nice way to really enjoy the beauty of these countries. It does of course get into specifics. So if anyone wants to design and plan their next trip, <laughs> You can really go into that. Hopefully it would, we'll all be able to travel again soon, but in the meantime, it's nice to be able to, good dream. Has anyone ever traveled to a Scandinavian country? I think Roberta, you mentioned that you've been to Sweden, right? Yeah, that's right. And I realized I've been to Iceland and I've been to um, Denmark. I don't know why I wow. forgot that. Yeah, it's, it was a long time ago. Oh, wow. That's really yes. fascinating. Yeah. That's so neat. Thanks for sharing that, Roberta. Sure. Yeah. I went back with uh, my mother and grandmother and sister to Sweden, and we went to Norway and Denmark, et cetera, but we oh. really wanted to go to the uh, summer solstice event in Sweden. And mm -hmm. so we took in all many of those events. And it was funny how, you know, cookies are so popular in Scandinavia and Sweden. And I think we would go from house to house visiting the relatives and they would all have a tray of cookies. <laughs> I don't know if we ate any solid food <laughs> besides cookies for days. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did you have a favorite cookie? I think Sunbuckle comes to mind. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of good uh, cookies with a little almond paste. Mm. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe next week my tray will be full of cookies. <laughs> I better... Uh, check out a baking book. <laughs> well, and just to mention quick, um, you know, my grandmother, who was 100% Swedish, uh, her goal, you know, and I'm sure it was connected to Huga, but I don't think our family ever knew that word. Mm -hmm. But anyway, her goal before Christmas, you know, was to make at least, must have been hundreds of cookies. I mean, she would have 
oh, probably 10 or 12 kinds that she'd made herself. And then, you know, maybe wow. her friends would give her some and she would give some away. So anyway, when my sister and I would come to her house for Christmas, you know, we were encouraged to eat as many cookies as <laughs> we could. And, you know, we, you know, supplemented our diet with cookies every single day. Hey, that's, <laughs> that sounds delicious. <laughs> All homemade and fresh and yeah. filled with love. Absolutely. And that's, um, that's all Fika, Huga, and Kozali too. That's really nice for you to share, Joseph. Thank you. Yeah. How do you spell Kozali? Uh, as far as I understand, it is K-O-S-E-L-I-G. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Kozali. You can use that as a search word if you're searching the Winding Rivers Library System catalog. catalog. Okay. And there are some titles that come up with that. Um, if anyone would want to um, continue the search, I would recommend starting out with the word Scandinavian and then narrowing it down from there. That's one way to uh, put items on hold for oneself to look online. Um, anyone can also call the library and um, speak with the librarian so we can help get some items on hold for you. And or we have paper forms in the library lobby um, that can be filled out and submitted as well. Then when the items come in for you, they um, are put on the hold shelf, which and then you get uh, a notification that you have indicated as your preference. Um, so that's either by email, phone call, uh, or a text message. And then before you come to the library, you give us a call so that we know you're coming, we check them out to you, and you can pick them up in the lobby. You just come right on in, you'll see your name on the counter with your items, take your things and off you go to have a hooga day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you folks so much for joining today. Um, it is time uh, to, for me to switch gears. We have Mr. Greg Layton. He is a local musician. And he is going to be performing after Fika Fridays uh, at 2 p.m. He has a music show that he puts together for everyone. So that is on a different Zoom link um, that is available on our Facebook and also on our website under adult programs. And yeah, so I'm off to a music program to extend all this FICA Friday fun that I've been having. But thanks to everyone. And this FICA Friday will meet uh, the fourth Friday of this month at one o'clock using the same Zoom link. So if you hold on to it, you'll always be able to get in. I really look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you, Lacey. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Yep. Bye, Joseph.